What's up everybody, it's Parker with VI Elite. I want to bring you a quick video on an awesome feature that was just delivered because of the March 2020 update, and that is dual axis line charts. This has been one of the most requested features since Power BI was released, so it's amazing that they were able to deliver it this month. I've already set up an example showing off how to use this dual axis line chart, but let's go ahead and start from scratch so we understand how to set this up. So if we just plot a normal line chart, and let's give it some size in the middle. So I am going to um, throw in a date dimension. I'm gonna use start of month. And let's say I wanna view my views data. We'll throw that in the values. So this is showing the views of my YouTube channel since I started the channel back in February, 2018. So we see views have steadily increased, but let's say I also want to see how my subscribers have been gained over time. I also have a measure for that subscribers gained. I'll throw that in this new Y2 well, and that's gonna create a second Y axis. And funny enough, we see that the views and subscribers pretty much coincide, but we see that there are two Y axes. On the left, there are views, which is a very different scale than my subscribers gained. We see that's more in the scale of hundreds, while views are in the thousands. You can already see the benefits of using a dual axis line chart because you're able to compare these metrics of two very different scales. Another way you can use this new visual in order to bring out a lot of insights in your data set is visualizing percent change against a metric. This is something that I've set up quite a few times in the past, but you have to get a little bit tricky with it by setting up maybe another line chart below the previous line chart. But now we can do this all on the same chart. So I'm gonna do that by getting rid of subscribers gained. I also have a measure called view change, or this is actually the percent change from month to month between my views. For example, in this month, my views grew 36% over the previous month. And we see that in the views data itself. So we go from 44,000 to 60,000 for a change of 36%. Now we're able to visualize this percent change very easily on the same chart as my views data. Taking it one step further, for my case specifically, we can go into the analytics pane of this visual, and I'm going to add an average line specifically for my views change measure. And now you see that there's this nice average line. So we see that my average is pretty much skewed by the rapid growth that occurred in the beginning of the channel, um, but my average is somewhere around 30%. So this is a view change of 36% right above my average. So my average is somewhere around 30%, but we're able to visualize a lot of great information directly on this chart. So as my views grow, you know, it feels pretty good, but I'm actually lower than my average, pretty much based on that March 2018 month. But I'd like to see my view percent grow above that channel average. So this is very interesting to see this all on the same chart. One last thing here, uh, just to get a little bit more detailed. If you've checked out my previous video on how to create conditional line markers, we can do the same thing with this dual axis line chart, although it applies to all of the series in your chart. I'm going to do that by changing to a line and clustered column chart. So we now have my views shown as uh, the columns and my percent change shown as the line. So we can um, go into the formatting and change the data colors. We can apply the conditional formatting by opening up these ellipses, conditional formatting, and I'm going to format by rules based on my uh, view change measure. Then I'm gonna set up some rules if it's greater than uh, zero number and less than or equal to maximum. I'm gonna make that green. New rule, if it is zero, I want that to be black. And then finally, one more rule. If it's greater than or equal to minimum number and less than zero, I wanna make that red. So pretty normal rules to see percent change. So we see that as my percent change dips below zero, it turns red. So the point I'm trying to make here is when we switch over to a line chart, all of this conditional formatting is applied to all the series in my report here. So um, this might not necessarily be what you want, but it's just one way to add conditional formatting to your dual axis line chart. So I'm actually gonna get rid of that because that's actually not necessary. So I'm gonna go back to my, um, my clustered column chart, revert to default, go back to my line chart. Now we're back to our line chart. So last point here, uh, you are able to format both the axes and both of the series in this line chart. So we can do that by applying uh, formatting directly to the Y axis. 
So if we increase the size, we can see that both y-axes are changing based on that formatting, but if we wanted to make one more specific, such as the y2 axis, we can actually increase that one individually and we see that is the only one that is growing larger. We can also come to the shapes area, and make the stroke width on either of them different sizes or apply it to both. So at this point, I think it's pretty easy to see the benefits of using a dual axis line chart. You're able to plot a lot of different information that might not be on the same scale and you're able to compare those values very easily. So I hope you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out the blog post that I'm gonna be posting about this trick as well, and I will see you in the next video.